So now, in this section, we are going to look into the ways in which we can extract a subset of data from a vector. Say, for example, we only want to extract um, males only, right? So we are looking into how can we do that using the square bracket. Okay, so on a square bracket, we can specify input. Say, for example, we have, um, we have blank, so we don't specify anything. So what um, that effect will return is that we will have all values of the vectors uh, will be returned. So if we specify um, the input uh, uh, and we have positive integers, for example, so in that case, we are going to have um, the values that we will return will be based on that uh, positive integers. So that is used as an index of values to return. But if we, we have a vector and we input negative integers, so that will be used as an index of values to omit. So that is the main difference. When we specify positive integers, so that is used as an index of values to return. But if we have um, negative integers, that is used as an index of values to omit. We can also have a vector where we specify logical values as input. So in that case, um, that will only corresponding true values will be returned. Okay, and also we have seen how can we uh, use names, right? And we, most cases, we use names so that we can, um, we can be able to extract subset using those names, right? So in that case, for example, if we specify, uh, in our example, and we specify um, male as an input into the square bracket, so in that cases, that will refer to the element names of values that we want to return. So let us look at this example by specifying a simple vector. Okay, I'm gonna clear the console and say um, this vector, this vector is six, eight, three, one, um, seven. Okay. So if we say the name of our vector, which is x, and we specify um, a square bracket, right? So this is going to return all the elements, right? But let's say you, you maybe you say you use the round bracket. So in this case, we will get an error, okay? So we only use square bracket to reference data, right? But if we use the round bracket, we are getting an error. So let's proceed by now using positive integers, right? Say for example, in our vector, and we give this input as one. So you see it just returns the first element in a vector. We can also use um, a C function to find the subset. Say for example, in this case, we use a C function, and we want to, to only return the first, um, the third element, and the fifth element, right? So this is how we can use a C function to return the first, the third, and the fifth element, right? But what you notice in this case is that this is nothing but a sequence of numbers, right? So we can also use what? The colon to specify um, the elements to return. Say, for example, we say C and we say return from the first element to the second element, right? And after that, return the fourth element and the fifth element. So in this case, our input is going to be the first element and the second element, which is six and eight. Then the fourth element and the fifth element, which is one and seven. And let's run that. So that is our output. So you can go ahead and play around with this. It is just a simple example of specifying or demonstrating how can we, um, how can we find a subset in a vector. Later, we're gonna look into how can we actually 
apply this in real data. But now this is just understanding the basics, right? So now let us move to negative integers. As we have observed in the last example that we have used a vector of positive integers where we want to, to find the, those elements in a vector. But we can also have negative integers. Okay. Say, for example, in this example, we observed that we only wanted the first, the second, the fourth, and the fifth element, right? So which element did we remove? Since our vector contains 6, 8, 3, 1, and 7. So this is the element that we didn't want, right? So another way in which we can find this same subset is to actually say use a negative integer, right? So this is the third element. So this is the, the element that we removed. So we can simply just say negative 3, right? So this actually will find the subset and remove only the third element and retain all the other elements, okay? So let's run this. And this is how we can use a negative integer. So a negative integer, it's just omit based on the value that you give. But now let's say, um, so the length of our vector, as you can see, is 5, right? So let's say you say omit the sixth element, right? So you can see the sixth element does not exist. So it will just return all the values that exist in all the elements of our vector, okay? But now if we were to use the positive input and say an A, because in this vector, we only have five elements and we wanted to return the sixth element. However, the sixth element does not exist in this vector. Okay, so now we can also use logical statement to create vectors of logical values, right? So in most cases, those um, vectors of logical values will be used as an input, okay? So let's demonstrate that. Right. So let us also. So this is our vector. Okay. So now if we say x greater than 5. Right. So what happened is that this statement, this logical statement, it looks into this vector and say all the elements that are greater than 5. So it will return true when the element is greater than 5, right? So this is the case. But this is not the subset that we want, right? So we want to be able to return the elements, right? So what we do in that case is that we specify our vector, right? Remember, to find the subset, we use the square brackets. And now we say return the subset where all the values are greater than 5. Right? So, for example, if the value is greater than 5, right, this condition will be true. And the element will be 6. So, it will find the subset. So, this is how you find a subset by using logical statement. Okay? So, as we observe here, that um, 6 is greater than 5, 8 is greater than 5, and 7 is greater than 5. So, we want to find a subset. This just returns, um, it just returns the logical statement when x is greater than 5. But to find the subset, we have to use the square bracket. Okay. So now, let us see the other statements that you can use. Okay. Say we want x is greater than 6, for example. Right. So you can see only 8 and 7 are true, right? We can also have x less than or equals to 6, okay? So in that case, it is less than or equals to 6. As you can see, um, this statement that we are getting is um, true and true because um, 8, um, ah, true because 3, I mean 3, is less than or equals to 6 and 1 is less than or equals to 6 so if we wanted to find a subset so if we wanted to find a subset we will say 
um, and give this condition and we will find those elements that are less than or equals to 6. We can also say um, conditions such as x is not equal to 6, right? We can also um, pass that condition and say we want those elements, right? Uh, we can also have um, a using and, okay? Say, for example, we say when um, x is greater than um, 2, for example, and and. So this is how we specify and. We use and and say x is less than or equals to 8, for example. So if we were to uh, pass this, and we can pass this also to find the, the, the subset using the square bracket. So these are all the values um, that all the elements in this vector where these elements are greater than 2, but these elements are less than or equal to 8. So it's included 8. We can also have or, for example, and we say when x is less than 2, or x is greater than 6, right? So if we were to find the subset of all this, we will have um, all these values. So as you can see, it says, okay, is x less than 2? It says it's true. So either of these two conditions have to be true if we are using or, right? So you specify or, so either of these have to be true. That is why we have 8, 1, and 7 as our output.